All right, so let's do another example where we're actually going to compute this series, a series of constants value using a Fourier series. So I've written a piecewise defined function here. We've got the function is zero from negative uh, pi to zero, and the function sine x from zero to pi. So just like before, we need to do our three integrals for f of x, f of x cosine nx, f of x sine nx. In this case, I don't need to do any adjusting in the const or in the arguments of the cosine and the sine function because the period's two pi for this particular f of x. Just like the previous example, we have a piecewise defined function, so we would need to split each integral into two parts to evaluate it. However, in this case, one of our pieces is zero, so we know the integral of that piece is going to be zero no matter what. So really, I only need to take care of the piece from zero to pi for the integrals. So let's bump over to GeoGebra and see what we get. All right, so I've already computed a couple of integrals here for you. Uh, the second one is not correct because I didn't put a space in here, so let's do that. So <clears throat> when we did the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x, we get 2. When we do the integral from 0 to pi of sine x cosine nx dx, we get this negative cosine nx minus 1 over n squared minus 1. Uh, two things that we notice. One, we can rewrite this cosine of n pi as negative 1 to the n. It's going to alternate between 1 and negative 1. The other thing that I notice is that this denominator is not defined when n equals 1, so we need to handle that separately. So this is like the function or the example we did in class yesterday. So let's just integrate sine x times cosine x from 0 to pi, and we get 0. So notice that these constants, uh, this constant is 0 when n is 1. Uh, when n is 2, we get negative 2 over n squared minus 1. When n is 3, we get 0 because we'll get a positive 1 minus 1. When n is 4, we'll get negative 2 again. So notice that whenever n is odd, we get 0. Whenever n is even, we get negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2 over a 2n squared minus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down so I don't forget what that is. So for this particular integral, we get negative 2 over the quantity 2n squared minus 1 for even n. Well, for, I'm sorry, we already took care of the even part. So this is for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's swipe back over to GeoGebra again and do the other integral that we need. So we need to integrate sine x times sine of nx, again starting at 0, ending at pi, and I don't know why there's extra stuff in there. Uh, notice here, no matter what n is, as long as n's at least 2, this is 0 because we just have multiples of pi inside the sine function. Again, I cannot plug in 1 in for n, so I have to handle that case separately. So integral of sine of x times sine of x, or you could write it as sine of x quantity squared from 0 to pi. And in this case, we get pi over 2. So this actually does give us a value. So for this one, we get it's pi over 2 if n equals 1, and it's 0 if n is greater than or equal to 2. All right. So, uh, we also got 2 for this answer, I believe. We just go back and make sure that's what I got was 2. Yes, we did. So, we'll go back over to Notepad. So, got 2 for our integral for our function. We got this is our constants for even, uh, even multiples of cosine here. And then this is... Um, what we got for the just the one thing for sine. So writing this out now, our f of x will be 2 divided by 2 pi. Remember, we take the value of the integral, divide by the period, and then we're going to add on pi over 2 divided by half of the period, which will be pi times sine of x. That's the only one we got from the sine function. For the cosine function, we'll have the series n equals 1 to infinity. We'll have negative 2 over 
And I'm going to write this as a product or a difference of squares factorization formula. So I have 2n plus 1 times 2n minus 1. And again, these were even n's. So this will be cosine of not just nx, but 2nx. And one thing I forgot was the constant again. So out in front, I need to have the period. So this looks considerably like the uh, formula we had last time, or last class, I believe. So uh, let's look at, see what we want to do here. So in this particular one, I would really, I want to see what we plug in zero and see what we get. So let's say we have f of zero, and from the original function, that's zero by our piecewise defined function. In this case, when we plug in zero, we'll get one over pi for the constant. Sine of zero is zero, so that term goes away. Cosine of zero is always one over here. So all I get over here is plus one over pi sum from, uh, this is what we did yesterday. So this is n equals one to infinity of negative two over two n plus one times two n minus one. So if we go through and do the rest of this, I can rearrange some things and get two over pi times this series. Oops. And then I get this particular series expansion. All right, so if we start plugging in some numbers here, we notice that if we plug in one here, we get three times one, so we get a third. And if we would plug in two, we would get um, five times three. So you get one over uh, three times one plus one over um, five times three and so on down the line. And that should be equal to pi over two. All right. But what if instead of we plugged in zero, let's say we plugged in something else. Let's say that we plugged in pi over two instead, just to see what we would get. So f of pi over two, well, again, by our function, we'll plug that into the sine piece, so that's gonna be one. Going back up to the formula for our Fourier series, if I plug in pi over two here, I'm gonna get one. I plug in pi over two over here, I'm gonna get co cosine of n pi, that's going to alternate. So we're gonna get one over pi for our constant. We're gonna get a one half, that's where the sine term was. And then we're gonna get a plus, the summation from n equals one to infinity of, I'm sorry, that's not one to infinity, that's two to infinity. I forgot, we can't plug in one there. No, I was right, wait, 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 sorry. Those are evens, I already changed it, sorry. That is supposed to be n equals one. Negative two over two n plus one, times 2n minus 1, times negative 1 to the n. Again, this negative 1 to the n comes from the fact that we had cosine of n pi, putting pi over 2n for x. So we do this. We're going to solve for the series here. So this part, we're going to get 2 plus pi over 2 pi. Uh, yeah, that's right, two plus pi over two pi. And then this will be plus the summation n equals one to infinity, negative two over two n plus one times two n minus one times a negative one to the n. So let's just rearrange some things here. Um, we'll get two the series. Oh, I'm missing a constant out in front here again, aren't I? I'm sorry. This needs to be, I have to divide by half the period out in front here. So this should have been one over pi here. So I get two over pi, my apologies. Uh, n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n over two n plus one times two n minus one. 
If I subtract, I subtracted this one over to the left-hand side. So if I to subtract the one over here, I'm going to get two minus pi over two pi. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So this one becomes, if I multiply by pi over two, we'll get n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n over the two n plus one times two n minus one. This is going to be become the pi's will cancel, and I'll get an extra two on top. We'll get minus two or two minus pi over four. Uh, notice that this term starts with a negative. If I put in 1 for n, I'm going to get a negative 1 here. So to make things a little bit nicer, let's make a negative 1 to the n plus 1 here. And this will be pi minus 2 over 4. And the reason I did that was because now if we expand this out, the first term is positive. We'll get 1 over 3 times 1 minus 1 over 5 times 3 plus 1 over 7 times 5 minus, and so on, gives us this pi minus 2 over 4. So we get another expansion that involves pi. So again, we could use this type of an expansion if we really wanted to try to get an approximation for pi over 4. So anyway, I just thought you might want to get some new... Uh, examples for you as you're doing your homework. So hopefully this helps.